Right, Group 12, for today's assignment, we're going to be looking at a transition uh, that changes from a square base to a circular opening at the top. Uh, here you can see if we analyze the front view and the top view, there's the top view, there's the front view, then you can see that the top view is flat, so is the base, which means that in the top view, the square base and the round top are both true shapes. So E, B, B, C, C, D, and D, E are already true lengths for the base. Then technically this top is a true length going round, okay, but because it's curved, we have to find another solution for that one. So to start, we're going to go from each base corner. Again, we're going to basically triangulate and we're going to draw construction lines from the base corners to each point on the top of the circle. And whenever you see a circle, we automatically divide it by 12. Now, of course, this could be much more accurate if you added more segment lines on the circle, but you are not required to do that. 12 is the maximum that you should add for exam purposes. Then, because of the top, the fact that it's curved, we can't actually measure on a curve. So what you have to do is you have to calculate the circumference of the top, which is 2 pi radius divided by 12, and that will give me a total of 94.25 millimeters divided by 12 and it gives me roughly it's actually rounded off it's 8 millimeters each so you're going to set your compass to that 8 whenever we mark down the top points then if we go to the top view you will see that you actually only have about three true links that you have to determine so because it's symmetrical both left and right back and front you can see that this corner here or fold line rather is the same as that one is the same as that one and so on so you've got one two three four five six seven eight that are the same then the green ones that are inside there at two going to the base there at at C you will see that it's also the same length as this one as that one and that one again you have eight of the green ones that are also the same length and then the last one is the starting line where it's being cut so obviously that's going to have its own true length needed now obviously this isn't the true length in the top view none of these are okay so again you're gonna to have to find that one as well so just like before you're going to take let's say the purple one you just need to take one of them it doesn't matter which one I'm going to swing out the base points you can also swing the top point down and then take that up it doesn't matter which one you do so I'm going to take the base point I'm going to swing it out when it's in line with the first point there at the top I've numbered it one you take that straight up and you mark it on the base and then you can link it to the top point and that will give me the true length so you can see this point here at one is in line with one here okay and the base point here is in line with the base point there in the front view then the green one, if I take this one, you'll see that the top point is actually not on the side of the circle. So this point, if I take it straight up, will actually be here. It's not on the corner. It's right there, a little bit more to the right. Okay. But the base point, again, you swing it out until it's in line with the top point. Move it up, mark it, and then you connect it. Please get in the habit of also writing true length on the lines in Afrikaans, Vara, Lengte. Okay. Then the third one we have to find is for the cutting line here. So we take the base point and I swing it out. If you swung out the top point, it would have made no difference. You take it up, you mark it on the base. You connect it to the top there, okay? Because the cutting line is actually in the middle and not on the side, in the back. And there's the third true length that we need. So once you have these three, you actually sort it and you can actually start with the transition. Right, so to start... I'm going to take this true length here, okay, I'm going to take that true length and I'm going to place it anywhere on the page. Now if you went more vertical or a bit more flat, it's fine, but if you tilted this line more over that side, you actually might have run out of space, okay. You have, have quite a lot of leeway if, let's say, the starting line went down here, it would have fit easily, it wouldn't have been a problem. But again, you want to go more or less vertical, okay? Then, after you've marked that line down, okay? Then you say, okay, from that corner here, we're going to go to A to B. That's already a true length. So I set my compass to AB, I put it on A, and I swing. 
then I say okay I need the true length of that that's one of the purple lines so I simply put my compass on the purple line put it on one I swing the compass and when it meets I've got point B and I connect it for the first triangle then you carry on then you say okay I need next I need this distance now obviously I can't measure on the curve but we've already calculated as eight millimeters so you take the top point and you mark it down with eight millimeters from one and then we know the next one is the green one so we set our compass to that green line that true length there we put our compass on B we swing it where the two meet so I swing it from B and where the two meet the eight and the green we just con connect that line don't draw that line yet leave that for later then you do the same again another green from this point swing it connect the point down then next is the purple you set your compass to the purple true length you put it on B you swing it you swing the eight and where the two meet you've got that one okay so there's a lot of repetition on this one then after you've gone one two and three now we want to find this triangle well thankfully it's already a triangle so we don't have to add an extra line so we say okay we take the base which is already a true length we put it on B we swing it we take the purple line we take it from one we swing it and we get that point and we connect it okay then you repeat the fold lines again do another triangle do the fold lines again do another triangle do the fold lines again and last but not least the same first triangle that you have here on 1a and b you do it again and you are done so it's a lot of repetition on this exercise okay usually once you're able to find the true links uh, you are sorted okay now it could happen in another exercise for example page 88 where it looks just like this but the base is cut at an angle the only difference between the two then is okay so for example if if let's say the base wasn't flat okay but it was let's say at an angle so this was actually gone okay what you do then you do exactly the same as before okay but for example then the base point um, might be higher up so instead of stopping here on this XY line here you might have to go higher and actually go on the base which means if that does happen where the base is cut in an angle you will actually find that these this these sets will be symmetrical and they will be the same but then these sets will not be the same so it will be symmetrical from back to front so these four and these four will be the same the fold lines but then when you go on the right side these four and these four will be the same so obviously if the base is cut it won't be perfectly symmetrical like this example but it's effectively the same method just a few more true links that you have to find so the key here obviously is knowing that you should relate it by 12 to get your distance and you can set your compass to that one okay right so when you're done it should basically look like this so you have your fold lines is not quite dark it's in between light and dark and the outline of course is dark as well and then at the end once you've plotted all these segment points going around on the inside curve on the top okay you can take a french curve and you connect that have a great day guys see you later